I'm very pleased to introduce uh, Yanis Kalyonsis, who is an assistant professor in Asian history at the Ionian University on Corfu. And he will be familiar to plenty of you, not least because he had a spell as a fellow of Harvard Center of Hellenic Studies. Uh, an epigraphist, he has catalogued inscriptions in collections and was co-director of the Corpus of Inscriptions for Central Boeotia. He has excavated extensively on the Greek mainland, especially in Boeotia, and appropriately enough, today his paper is the memory of the battle in epigraphy. So thank you, Sonia. I would like to thank Natasha for organizing this great conference. I'm very happy to participate in this interesting group of scholars. And I have to admit that I have already changed my paper many times since the beginning of the conference because of the interesting opinions and perspectives that I have heard. The Boeotian landscape, and as a Boeotian, I have to say that, was dominated by war. It is well known that Boeotia was the dancing floor of Ares, according to Epaminondas, and that the commemoration of the dead of various battles was at the center of Boeotian memory. Many monuments dedicated to the battles of the past, a lot of famous monuments are dedicated to war, like the trophy of Lefkra that you see on this screen, the lion of Keroneia, the tumulus of the Macedonians in Keroneia, the polyandrion at Thespie, and the new trophy of Sula from Orkomenos discovered some years ago for the battles of 86 BC. Boeotia remained the dancing floor of Ares because of its strategic position till the Second World War. A proof is this icon from the Cathedral of Orkomenos, the Church of Scripu, that commemorates the protection offered by the Theotokos against the Nazi attack on the village during the war. Let's hope that the same thing will happen to another city dedicated to Maria Mariopolis in Ukraine. What is exceptional in Boeotia is that the landscape uh, of the battles and of war in general, it's still more or less intact, as for example, in Keroneia or in Plataea, and not destroyed as happens unfortunately in Marathon. One of the means by which the memory of war was presented in the landscape of Boeotia was epigraphy. Numerous inscriptions uh, in public and private monuments commemorated war dead, especially in Western Boeotia, in Plataea and Thespiae, it is clear that the influence of the Athenian Demotion Sima and the commemoration of the war dead in Athens played an important role in the commemoration of the war dead in these regions. But among all the battles fought in Boeotia, maybe the most prominent was the Battle of Plataea. This battle created waves of memory that were perpetuated in the following centuries. One of the ways through which the memory of this important lieu de mémoire was perpetuated is through inscriptions. Epigraphy is, of course, the tip of the iceberg of the memories and monuments dedicated to the battle. But the fact that the city of Plataea is so badly known through archaeological excavations makes epigraphy one of the primordial sources on the perception of the memory of the battle. Epigraphy, of course, gives us only a glimpse to the fluctuations of, on the perception of the memory of the battle. The epigraphical sources on the memory of the battle are so numerous that it is impossible to present uh, all of them in this talk. I will try to present some uh, a selection of different categories of inscriptions from different periods in a kind of chronological order. Hans saw it as yesterday the important new tablets from the archaic period, maybe the end of the sixth century, and or the beginning of the fifth, 
uh, found in Thebes uh, that are mentioning the region of Asopos and present us the prehistory of the conflict around Plataea. And this, um, of course, these tablets, as Hans said yesterday, will be published by Papas Arcadas and Matthew, as Nicolaus informed us yesterday. For the first centuries after the battle, the inscriptions are very few and are rather missing. And we can only mention a few examples of them. So the recent publication by Nicolas Papazarkadas of a fifth century BC epigram from Thebes that was later reinscribed, maybe in the fourth century, and could belong to two Thebans fallen in that battle. Uh, this epigram is very interesting, very fragmentary and very difficult to read, but it commemorates the memory of maybe two uh, war dead uh, Thebans that died in a battle, maybe Plataea, and we see uh, uh, in line two and Polemoi Thanemen, and the mention of the Athla Kratis Taretas in the last line. So here is Sula's ah, trophy. Yes. Right. Here is Sula's trophy and the yes. icon from Orkomenos. And I was, here is Heronea, the nice valley of Heronea with the battlefield, which as you can see is well preserved. Here is uh, a cavalryman from Thebes, a private monument for a war dead coming from Thebes. Here is the tablets from um, Thebes that are talking about uh, properties in the region of Asopos that has presented uh, us uh, yesterday. And so here you see, I hope, the, um, the epigram from Thebes with the two uh, war dead maybe in the battle of um, Plataea. And you see the mention now of Enpolemoi Thanemen in line two and in line eight, the, the last line, Atla Klatis Taretas. Uh, and it will be very interesting to know how the Thebans in the fourth century BC interpreted this epigram about two dead Midizers. That would be interesting to know, but we don't have a clue. So the third century BC, I hope that now you see the change. Okay. Yes. Oh, great, great. Uh, the third century BC saw the creation of important institutions that would propagate the memory of the battle in the following centuries. The koinon of the Hellenes and the contest of Eleutheria. These two Panhellenic institutions that had a clear anti-Macedonian orientation will remain active for many years, although not always continuously. It is during the third century that we start finding many mentions of these Platean institutions pertaining to the battle. There is till now a unique decree emanating from the koinon of the Hellenes. Uh, there is a decree honoring uh, the Athenian politician Glaucon, a son of Eteocles, that was found in Plataea. This decree honors Glaucon, the younger brother of the well-known Athenian politician Cremonides, who had also a great career that brought him to the court of Ptolemy II in Alexandria. This decree mentions explicitly the cult of Zeus Eleftherios and the homonia of the Greeks and the contest of the Eleftheria that was organized by the Greeks in Plataea. Other degrees emanating from the koinon uh, of the Hellenes could have uh, been erected in Plataea, honoring important members of the Ademacedonian party in Greece. At the same period with the decree of Glaucon and the mention, and the mention of the contest of Eleutheria, we start finding the first mentions of victories in this contest in various inscriptions from different cities of the Greek world. I will cite, for example, this list of victories of an Argian athlete dated to the third century BC, mentioning that he was the first of the Achaeans to uh, win the race from the trophy of the battle of 
πλατεία ελευθέρεια οπλίταν των από του τροπάιου πράτος ακαιών. Other victory lists of the second century mentioned victories at um, Eleutheria, such as a list from Rhodes and another one from Epidaurus, uh, where we have the mention of in line five, Eleutheria tanem plateais hypion. Uh, and new victories in the Eleutheria have recently appeared in Hellenistic victory lists from Messine, two new victory lists mentioning um, the Eleutheria from uh, the Peloponnesian city of Messini. Uh, the Eleutheria continued to be popular during the imperial period when a lot of athletes participated in the contest, like Nikofanis, son of Aradas from Thespian, who won four times in the Eleutheria during the Augustan period and lines four and five, we have Tetrakis, Eleftheria, and Plateais. And here is the photo with the mention of the contest. Or an anonymous athlete, Pythodorus from Kos, who won the Eleftheria uh, that have also received at the time the title of Caesaria. In the period of Augustus, should be dated and enigmatic inscriptions that have been that has been recently published. Uh, it is a list of names with the title Enolinto in Olynthus. This list should be a casualty list and contain the names of soldiers who had fallen in a battle at Olynthus. The soldiers could be Plataeans who had participated in the Athenian contingent that tried to defend Olynthus against the armies of Philip II. During that period, the Plataeans had found refuge in Athens after the destruction of their city by the Thebans. And it would have been normal, uh, thanks to the close relationship between Athens and Plataea to take part in the Athenian army. But the letter four of the inscription doesn't belong to the fourth century BC, but to a much later period, probably the period of Augustus. The cultural policy of Augustus preconizing a return to the traditional values of classical Greece and to the glories of the past could have influenced the importance of the memory of Plataea and added value to the commemoration of the battle of 479 and to other important battles of the past. Another important period when the memory of the past was cherished is the period of the Philippine Emperor Hadrian, when the Greek past became the focus on the imperial policy. This casualty list could be an attestation of the effort made by the city of Plataea to use the memory of the great battle in order to promote its own civic memory and history. After this period, the famous inscription um, from Acrefia with the speech of Emperor Nero and a decree by the city honoring the emperor. So it's the famous speech uh, where Nero in 67 AD is granting freedom to the Greeks living in the province of Achaea. In the accompanying decree in the same stele, after a proposition by the local benefactor Epaminondas of uh, Acrefia, the city has to dedicate an altar to Nero that bears also the title of Zeus Eleftherios and to erect a statue of Nero as Zeus Eleftherios in the temple of Apollo at his sanctuary at Toyon near the city. It seems that this proposition follows the accordance of the title of Zeus Eleftherius by the koinon of Hellings, of Hellings at Plataea to Nero. The athletes who want the armed race uh, at the Eleftheria of Plataea received the title of best 
of the Greeks, Aristos των Ελλένων. This title appears in many inscriptions of the imperial period, spanning from the first century AD to the third century AD. A list of victory of an athlete from uh, victories from, of an athlete from Megara, IG749, proves that the uh, Eleutheria continued to be celebrated during the reign of the Emperor Gordian III in the middle of the third century AD. From the same period uh, dates a series of honorific inscriptions from Sparta belonging to a prominent family of the city where the title Aristos ton Helenon is one of the most distinguishable features of the titulature of the members of the Spartiate elite. It is not worthy that most of the inscriptions mentioning this title, Aristos ton Helenon, um, come from Athens and Sparta, the two cities that had a prominent role in the organization of the commemoration of the battle during the imperial period. This commemoration included the famous uh, dialogos, dialogue, the ceremonial dispute uh, between Athens and Sparta over leading the procession in Plataea. This dialogos is attested in several Attic Ephibi catalogs of the second century AD, and there is even uh, one fragmentary speech by an Athenian over uh, Plataea and the battle of uh, Plataea. It is IG2 square 2788, where the city, as you can see in line 18, speaks for herself. The city of Athens speaks for herself. A proof of the interest of Plataea uh, and the memory of the battle by the Philelene Emperor Hadrian comes from an inscription that was found reused in Thebes. Unfortunately, this inscription is composed of, by two parts and is too fragmentary in order to have a certain understanding of its context. But it is obvious that the emperor intervened in favor of the city in a financial affair concerning plots of land. The mention of ending of the ethnic Lacedaemonian at the end of the second fragment shows that another instance, possibly the koinon of the Hellenes, might have been implicated in this affair. Um, the memory of the battle at Plataea was preserved and propagated in a much more institutionalized way in comparison with other battles of the same period. The memory of the battle took a Panhellenic character as an opposition to the Macedonian domination of, Greeks, of, Greek, of Greece during the Hellenistic period. It is true that excavations can be destructive and that the geophysical survey of Plataea some years ago has yielded excellent results that show uh, that a lot of the public monuments of Plataea are preserved in a more or less good state of preservation. But modern methods uh, do not permit till now to read inscriptions buried underground and we might find a lot of interesting new inscription if there is a new excavation at Plataea. One can only imagine the interesting documents that could be found in this excavation. A lot of questions about the, about the problems of the monumental landscape of uh, this important lieu de mémoire could be resolved that way. A sign of the persistence of the memory of the Battle of Plataea, even in medieval period, is the fact that the well-educated Fatih Sultan Mehmet uh, visited the site of the battle and knew very well the history of this site of the battle, uh, according at least to his flatterer, the infamous Critobulus of Imbros. Thank you very much. So I will try. Fascinating. Thank you very much. Well, That's great. Okay. No. And sorry for again, all the technical problems. 
not at all. You know, that's just uh, um, we got there in the end, and fascinating to get such an insight into the material that you've been working with. And again, this has really opened up onto a, a, a different perspective on the battle. And of course, it makes sense. It would have surges, if you like, of popularity and maybe die back a bit, surge again. And I think you brought out really nicely there how this can uh, have took place for this particular battle. And well, absolutely, it is time to open this up for questions. Does anybody have any uh, anything burning they would like to ask or any comments they would like to, to make? And I might even take the privilege of asking if you could open the up. Epigraphist, a... The epigraphist talks to the epigraphist. And so... <laughs> <laughs> or the Beosian talks to the Beosian. <laughs> Off the way. Uh, yes, Natasha, go for it. Uh. Thank you so much. So I think my first question would be about Prata Sahayon, this uh, really interesting uh, inscription. You said from Argos, I got it right. So, yes, I yes, got, yes. so could you comment about, because um, why Achaians? Is the, are we sp speaking in the Homeric sense here? Yes, the problem with them um, ethnic, there is a great problem with this ethnic, the Achaeans. So this is the period when Argos belonged to the um, Achaean Koinon, the Achaean Confederation. Oh, okay. And that's why uh, they have the ethnic Achaeans. Um, and um, so I think that this is the reason behind this ethnic, the, um, the fact that the, the, the the, the citizens of Argos were also citizens of the Achaean Koinon. But the date is very interesting because we are in the middle of the third century. And uh, of course, the chronology for the um, inauguration of the um, Eleftheria is rather problematic. We don't know exactly when this contest begins, or um, we don't know if there is a continuous um, organization of this uh, contest, but at least for um, um, after 270 uh, BC, we know, thanks also to the decree in honor of Glaucon, that there is a new interest for uh, Plataea, for um, the memory of the battle, and uh, there is the, um, the Koinon of the Hellens, and so we might have um, a new organization of the contest during this period. And that's why um, this uh, Argian athlete is the first of the Achaeans to win this race. Um, it's a question of date. It, he participated maybe in one of the first or in the first decade of the new organization. That could be an interpretation for the uh, Pratos Acheon. Very interesting. I, I somehow I am very curious about the sort of. I mean, like I am extremely out of my depth here, but I am very somehow curious about the possible double meaning, sort of the technical meaning of the Koinon and the more sort of generalized Homeric meaning. Yes, I have to think about this could be also a possibility. Uh, the Achaean ethnic was really important, both for the Koinon and for the mythological heritage, let's say. Well, especially in what we have, you know, if we go all the way back to the Plataean elegy and uh, the um, prominence of Achilles there. So I'm just trying to see how ve possibly very distant like unrelated things might be connected, but thank you so much for the fantastic talk. And Shane. Hey, thanks. Um, a few points, Yanis. Uh, think, thinking what Natasha was saying, I wouldn't be surprised at all if there were performative, you know, uh, oratorical exercises or whatever at the Eleftheria, re-performing Simonides or something like that to give some sort of context to this. Um, anyway, that's off the top of my head. Uh, the other thing is, I, I was thinking about that, that uh, Paratus Achaeon uh, and 
your idea that this might be one of the very first people to win at the LF3, which would be wonderful. Wouldn't it be fantastic if we actually had one of the very first people to win at it, or the very first person to win? But it reminds well, me that Yes, he was the first of the Achaeans. Maybe we had other, I don't know if the Achaeans were always yeah. the best athletes. That's, that's a problem, yes. But it reminds me of another inscription that Robert edited in 1949 in honor of a Milesian athlete, where he also wins at the Eleftheria in the uh, the Tropion, the, the Dromon Apotu Tropion, and he's Anagorethenente Ariston ton Elenon Proton Kemonon ton Apotisasias. So the first and only one from Asia. And would it be surprising to think of 250 years without a single victor from Asia? I don't know. And maybe there's some sort of idea that this Aristoselinon is such a good thing you you I'm the first from the whole of the Peloponnese and the first from Asia the first from wherever to um it yes. doesn't mean exceptionally uh, high honor anyway to win that anyway that was just the parallel with the protoss protoss thing of yes yes um this this inscription from Melitus is really important also and it's a parallel for the um, archive inscription yes for Protoselinon Acheon and um, I just wonder, Yanis, if maybe you could, um, you speculated a little bit about the ep epigram from Tanagra reinscribed. I wonder if you uh, had any more thoughts you might like to share about that. Well, this is, this is an epigram from Thebes. This is an epigram from Thebes that we discussed also yesterday with uh, Hans. And uh, well, this is uh, also Nicolas Papazakadas has written about uh, this question of uh, reinscribing older monuments in Thebes, because there are there are rather a lot of uh, inscriptions, um, early inscriptions uh, mentioning historical uh, events from Thebes that were reinscribed, uh, especially in the fourth century, and so there is a quest for memory. Uh, in Thebes uh, at the fourth uh, century, the period of hegemony um, is a period when people are trying to go back to the glories of the past and uh, to um, reinterpret uh, and better understand um, older monuments. So it's either the period of the hegemony or at least fourth century after the destruction of Thebes. So we don't know exactly, but um, it is a very interesting and rather unique a phenomenon in Thebes that um, documents inscribed uh, with the archaic epicoric alphabet are re-inscribed uh, with the Ionian script uh, in the fourth century. And uh, there is a clear um, quest to uh, reestablish the glories of the past and to understand the glories of the past. Because uh, I don't know if all Thebans could understand the archaic script of, the, um, of this Theban epigram in the fourth century. Uh, when they were used to the Ionian script. So um, they are really trying to go back and understand um, their local past through inscriptions. Thank you. It does seem intriguing. And I love your expression, the quest for history. I mean, this is just lovely. And uh, Paul Bardunius, you have a question too. <coughs> How are you doing? Thank you. You know, I'm sorry I was up my elbows in fish tank water. Um, I, and my question is, it, it's outside of the period, but I'm, I'm just really curious. Yeah, I thought you might, ha might know something. Do you know if anything was done at Plataea to, uh, during the reign of Caracalla when he did that whole Parthian expedition where he recreated Spartan phalanxes and he recreated um, Macedonian Sarissa phalanxes? I'm just curious if there's anything that... Yes, uh, I don't think that we have any information about that, about Caracalla in Plataea. Unfortunately, I don't think that we have something um, from that period um, in, in Boeotia in general, and especially in Plataea. Unfortunately, not. Sorry about that. Thank Paul. you. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm just curious. It seems like something he would do. Yeah. Thank you. 
Natasha. So uh, another little question about the uh, this mysterious list uh, in Olenthoi. Um So uh, just uh, how, like one thing that struck me was that on this rather short list, two people had names connected with Azopos River. And, yes. Uh, and you know, especially in relation to what um, what Hans was talking about yesterday about Thebes sort of sharing uh, all kind of plots of land uh, on their side on both sides of uh, Asopos. It's interesting to have this sort of stakes, prosopographic stakes on Asopos from Plataeans. Yes, that's that's a very interesting remark. You have a very acute onomastic <laughs> criterion, Natasha. <laughs> well, I have written about that in my article on this inscription because this this is an inscription that was found in the 1920s in Plataea, in a field in Plataea, and because of World War II was never published, and I published it uh, some uh, 90 years after it was found. And uh, well, it, it's a fortuitous find. And so the provenance uh, doesn't come from, from an excavation. And someone could say that it comes from another region of Boeotia and it ended up in Plataea fortuitously. But uh, the, the fact that we have these names uh, with um, the first part, uh, the river name, as suppose, proves that it comes from this region and especially from Plataea that it is so near uh, as suppose. And there is even a name that it is only attested in uh, Thucydides. So um, I can't remember as Apollos, I think is only attested in uh, Thucydides. So there is an extra um, proof that this inscription comes from, um, comes from Plataea. But uh, there is also a great problem with um, inscribing this, this monument. Uh, the letter forms are uh, not so characteristic, but it's, they seem to belong to the imperial period, either Augustan or Hadrianic. And so um, there is uh, once more a quest for history. And um, the question is where they have found the, the names, the old names of the Plataeans that were dead in a battle of at Olynthos, uh, maybe in the fourth century, at the beginning of, or the middle of the fourth century, uh, if it is the battle for the destruction uh, during the destruction of Olynthos by Philip II. And um, I have emitted the hypothesis that uh, maybe we had a parallel monument in the Demotion Sema in Athens with the names of these Plataeans, and they could have copied the names from the Demotion of Sima and re inscribed them in a monument at Plataea in well, order to commemorate the civic memory of, um, of the fallen in their city. <laughs> 